the floss tube. It's Kim, otherwise known as Spartan Stitcher on Instagram and my Etsy shop. I'm here for floss tube number 11 and today is the 8th of April. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for all my new subscribers and all your great comments and likes and thanks everybody for watching. So, stitching this past week. Um, last week's homework in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature were um, troubles everywhere. So the first one was uh, that the fat lady had disappeared. So you had to work on a piece that was at least 75% done and put in 300 stitches. Well, because I finished Moon Hair last month, I really didn't have a piece or even just a full coverage page that was at least 75% done. So, um, this one, my Friendship Compass, which was a freebie by Glenn in Place, was the closest to that. And because I don't know if I'm going to have enough floss for the rest of it, I didn't know if, you know, where the ending point is. It's hard to determine if it's 75% done. Um, but because it is Big Boss of Color, it was easy to do. So I did this, um, the penalty stitches anyways. So again, this is a, a freebie by Glendon Place Stitchers Facebook group. You have to be in the Facebook group to get it. Uh, it's called Friendship Compass. It's a mandala design. You choose your own colors in colors of floss and beads. Um, and you can't, there is a crew floss right there in the corner. You can kind of see it now when I get close. Um, once I do the corner pieces to make this into a square, then there's a, uh, one more layer of border that goes around it um it calls for like because you choose your own colors you still follow the symbols though so after you make the corner to make this piece square all the way around then there's one more layer of um stitches and it says to use the same colors that you use that i use as green uh I do think I'll have enough floss to finish that, but I'm going to have to consider what I do because I'm not sure if, if I want more green or if I want to bring out the light pink and the purple again. Um, I told you that I, I picked these colors based off uh, the quilt that you guys are on right now. I don't know if I can show it to you. Well, things are falling down. Um, but it's a, it's a quilt that's on my guest bed. Um, the predominant color is green. So I'll just have to, once I've finished the corners, I'll have to look at it and hold it up in, against the quilt and see. Uh, this is 14 count Fiddler's Ada that I got from Sue, the 94 year old woman that I bought her stash. And the floss is from my grandmother's stash and those are unmarked unlabeled colors so i couldn't tell you what they are so that's french and compass i did 600 stitches on that um the second part of the homework was because the dementors caused people to, to black out you had to do 300 stitches in dark colors um and in the actual dark colors it didn't just have to be on the piece so i pulled out <coughs> excuse me I pulled out uh, Friends Forever by Ann Stokes. It's charted by Hayde, and I'm over here in the second row of pages in this dark spot right here, so it worked perfectly. Um, and this is tent stitching, so I had to do 600 stitches, 25 count Ghana. So there's the whole piece so far. And so there's a partial page that's already done, and then this is the next page. So um, the way that this one's charted, you just, you do the black first, and then you keep building and building. So all those shaded areas just keep growing bigger and bigger. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell when when you do this, the start and ending pictures, but because um, it's not like one big block of colors, it's all those areas were a little thicker. So here's my piece of advice. If you're in the School of Magical Stitches and you have something like this where it's, 
you got to ask yourself as you're posting the pictures, is it obvious where I stitched? And if it's not, or even if you're taking like a full on wide, wide eye view of the piece, it helps the graders immensely if you say, this is where I stitched, or this is where I put in the stitches. So I put on my post when I put the finishing picture on there that I added, you can see this part got darker because I filled in some blanks. And I said that it added to all the thick, you know, to make all these shaded areas thicker. Just to kind of direct them where to look and make it easier to see. Which makes it faster for us because we have several hundred posts to look at. Um, even, even just, you know, we grade one house per week, each of us, and then we might verify another. So that's, that's 200 posts just for one house, up to 200 posts. So make things a little easier. If you give a wide-eyed view and it's not like a close-up shot that's really obvious, tell them what you worked on. So that was my 600 stitches in dark threads. Um, and then, let's see. The third part of the homework was on my uh, piece that's also my 90-day... Um, challenge piece in full coverage fanatics so I'll get to that later um, and then I started working on my remaining extra credit tasks for March and April I only had three tasks left and the timing just worked out my motivation worked out and I was able to get all three tasks done so I'm now done with the stitching extra credit for uh, year three so for prisoner of Azkaban um, so 500 stitches on a piece that betrayed you is harder than you thought and 500 stitches on a, a piece that's map related because we come across the Marauders map. For the map related task it's been approved that any piece with three buildings um, qualifies. So I worked on Macintosh Mill. So you have the mill, this is a tavern, and then back here in the distance you have a church. So those are my three buildings, and this piece has betrayed me because although I love Charles Wasaki art, it has been tremendously hard for me to get into actually stitching on this piece, and it's not that hard. I just haven't been enjoying it. It's on 18 count Ada that came with the kit, and finally, this was a Mania 2017 start, um, and so it's that's it's. I haven't worked that much on it because I haven't been able to get into it and I gritted it to try to make it easier because I think the problem was one of the problems was I didn't know which direction to go which way I should start like for Hades and Tilton Craft you have pages well this is just one very long uh, design and then you have to start in the center because it's a kit and you don't know how much extra fabric you have for the border so what I did Previously, you know, I had already done um, the big box of color for the door, the window, the hayloft doors, then this black and this window up here. And I had started on the sign. So I finished the blue on the sign. I did the outline. I did the back stitching. Um, I did the back stitching in the windows. And then I started on doing all these stones. Um, these stones and the, the hay are all half stitches as well as the sky that I brought over so I had to do some math because I had um, for each of those tasks I had some full stitches and some half stitches so I had to divide my half stitches because they only count as half of course and I did all this so there's gonna be clouds over here I carried that that's the roof line of the mill I carried over um, all those stones will be partially backstitched to give them some dimension. Um, but there, it's not like they'll be fully backstitched, each one. Just, just a little bit for, like, some shading. So, that was worth, let's see, I actually did 482 full stitches and 789 half stitches, or uh, backstitching, too. So that's what I did to complete those two 
extra credit tasks. And then my last remaining task was <clears throat> uh, the time turner piece for working on a piece that was from the 1990s or before. Um, I could have continued working on Macintosh Mail, but I've uh, that w took me, let's see, two days? Two or three days? Let's see. And so I was like, I need to work on another piece, give some other piece some more progress. Um, so I pulled out Camelot Sampler by Teresa Winsler. This is from 1995, is the copyright. And I'll straighten. So that's what it looks like finished. I didn't know if I was, you know, how far I was going to get because I, I had some one over one. I had some back stitching to do. So I took a picture to show both the sword and the Guinevere area. And I was able to finish up Guinevere. And that was enough. Let's see. I did 290 one over one stitches on 28 count and then 663 back stitch and long stitch. <clears throat> so, uh, last time you saw her, she didn't have eyes and she didn't have a crown. So I finished those up. Also, she didn't have the little green swirly bits in the, in the top corners of her portrait. So I, that was the 290. And then I backstitched all of her. And also you see behind her is uh, Acru Pearl Cotton to give it some dimension and decoration behind her. Those are the long stitches. So again, up close, she looks a little funny. But back here, she comes together. Very fancy lady. So Guinevere is now done. So next, I don't know if it'll be a work on Excalibur or Arthur or keep working on this Twisted Vine over one section. But I want to get all this done before I move up to the big jousting scene. The jousting scene is mostly one over one. So, um, so I'm now done with the Stitching Axe Credit for March and April. And uh, my 90-day piece for the second quarter of the year in Full Coverage Fanatics is Oh Baby. This is the one that I am cropping off where that line is. I'm not stitching all that green background um, because it's silly and because I had fabric that would fit just this piece. So... Um, for the homework that was uh, Professor Snape changes the lesson plans so you have to stitch on something that has gone off course or that you have changed. Um, so obviously I'm changing this one because I am not stitching all of this. Uh, so this was the first week on this one. I have done so far over 2400 tent stitches on this green background. There's three colors of green in there so far. And this is not what you call confetti. Um, and you can see the those lines of blanks. Those are going to be eyelashes. Horses have very long eyelashes. Um, top and bottom. That are like whiskers on cats. They help them feel so that it prevents them from bumping their eyes into things. So, um, so that is not confetti. That is what you'd call dithering. I learned about this in one of Miska Cat's uh, videos. So, dithering like this, it's used a lot in um, computer images and TV, where you put together different different colors because at a distance, it brings more depth to the to the picture. Or like if you would think of um, like a checkerboard of red and blue squares, the smaller or the farther away you view that checkerboard of red and blue squares, it looks purple. So that's what a dithering would be. So it's not really confetti because it is very few colors. It's just there's a there's a, a inconsistent pattern with where you stitch. And you can see some of the different colors in there. 
and it just adds more depth once, once you bring it back. So I have three more colors to put in. Two of them are, are pretty small. There's not, not many stitches in there. And then the majority of this will be in the third color of green. And I showed you my floss cards. You know how many colors of green are in this piece just to make up and add some interest. <clears throat> not, not just for the, the plain background, but for the fence post too. So that's where I'm at. So if I was using this piece for by the numbers 1200, I'd already be done. But this, because it is my everyday piece and today's only the eighth, that's why I'm doing by the numbers 2400. So I need 4,800 10 stitches. So I will continue to work on that, um, which brings up this week's homework, which is friend versus friend because Ron's uh, rat scabbers and Hermione's cat. Um, I just had a complete brain fart. The cat's name. I can't think of it. That's ridiculous. Anyways, the cat was going after the rat, which made Ron and Hermione not like each other and fight. So this week's homework is uh, work on two different pieces that are clamoring for your attention. So as I said before, I don't like to waste my stitches. So this is one of my pieces that's clamoring for my attention since I'm stitching on it every day. You have to do 500 stitches, so that's a thousand tent stitches for me, which won't be a problem because I already did 2,400 stitches in a week. Um, so I'll keep working on that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then last week when I worked on the dark threads on uh, Friends Forever, I didn't want to put this down because it's pretty easy stitching and I can see that the remaining parts of that page is more easy stitching and I want to get a page finish. Even though this isn't any of the, this isn't one of the pieces that I chose for to work on this month, but I want to get a page finish, so I'm gonna to work towards that page finish. This is my second piece. I'm gonna put in a thousand ten, more ten stitches on that page to see where it brings me. So, those are my uh, homework pieces for this week. Uh, after I get those done, I'll probably want to work on something that's not full coverage. You know, I'll continue working on Oh Baby every day, but that's not my main focus. And so I'll probably, I'm, th I'm thinking about pulling out uh, Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace. I haven't worked on her in over a month, and she's one of the pieces I want to finish this, this year. So I need to give her some attention. I'll probably look to see if, um, which of the ult ultimate stitching tasks that uh, she can qualify for. And then put in at least a thousand stitches on her. And then we'll see where we are in a week. How many how many more days and see what else might I might want to work on some of my, my smalls to finish them up and get them out off my whip list. Cause I I, I wanna get those out of the way too. Um so that's what my week looks like. My daughter had a slight fever Thursday after school. My oldest daughter, she's in first grade, and but she didn't have a fever Friday morning, so I sent her to school. But then I found out that other kids in her class have been diagnosed with the flu and wasn't surprised then by lunchtime Friday when they called me to come pick her up. So she's been sick with a fever, cough, and uh, sometimes headache all weekend. Luckily, nothing, no digestive problems. So she's home from school today because she's still not fever free. She's still, she's at 99.7. We're hoping that no one else in the house gets the flu. And yeah, so I gotta make this a quick video. Sorry, it's on the short end. I wanted to show you some other things. I wanted to maybe bring Hopper in here, but I've got two kids and it's almost lunchtime. So I need to go out there and uh, get their lunches ready. So I hope everybody has a great week and I'll see you next time. Happy stitching and uh, we'll see you later. Bye guys.